All right, so I'm going to show you this guy. To the 10 people who recognize this model of computer on site, cool. But the rest of you are going to need some introduction. This is a Digital Computer Controls D116 mini computer. It is a clone of the Data General Nova 1200 mini computer. Data General was a company founded by a few ex-DEC employees, and their Nova line would go on to compete against the more well-known PDP-8 and PDP-11 computers. Of course, this is not a standard Data General Nova, but a clone made by Digital Computer Controls, a company who bought a Nova 1200 secondhand along with its schematics and reverse engineered them to create their own computer, which just happens to be exactly like a Data General Nova 1200 in pretty much every way but the branding on the front. Yes, the internals are just as blatantly copied as the front panel is. Some people might not like their computer being not original, but eh, I don't really mind. I like weird machines, and they copied it closely enough that I don't really have to worry about compatibility issues. Of course, Data General sued, but the case dragged on for so long that Digital Computer Controls was able to sell computers through most of the 70s. This particular specimen is fitted with a CPU, 8 kilowords of core memory, and a serial I.O. card, suitable for an ASR33 teletype, such as this one. This sort of teletype was popular with minicomputer users not only because it provided a convenient way to input and output text via the teleprinter, but also a rudimentary form of storage in the form of its paper tape punch and reader facilities. Anyway, I've made enough progress with this guy to show you the process of bootstrapping Data General Standalone Basic and running a program. First, we must load the bootstrap loader into core memory using the toggle switches on the front panel. We set the desired address and hit examine to get the computer looking in the right place. Then we toggle in the data, up for 1, down for 0, and hit deposit to, well, deposit. From here we rinse and repeat, except we can now use deposit next to, well, deposit next. Keep going until the entire bootstrap loader has been toggled into memory. Now that the bootstrap loader is in memory, we can use it to load the binary loader into memory. For this, we need the teletype, so turn that on, thread the paper tape on which the loader is stored into the paper tape reader, and set the switch to start, placing the teletype under computer control. Once I start the bootstrap loader, the paper tape reader immediately starts reading the paper tape and the loader does its job of taking each bit of data and putting it into the right place in memory. After a few seconds and a little bit of help for the paper tape, both the paper tape reader and the Nova halt, signaling that the bootstrap loader has done its job. Now the binary loader is ready to go. The binary loader is essentially a more sophisticated version of the bootstrap loader, Read the paper tape put in memory. It will perform the task of loading the much larger Data General Standalone BASIC, 
because of the sheer amount of paper tape involved in loading standalone basic, it's a bit more complicated than simply letting the tape fall on the floor. Here I'm using a repurposed trash bin and a 3D printer spool holder thing. The spool holder keeps it from unspooling on the floor or the center coming out, and the trash bin catches the tape that's already been read so it doesn't make the giant pile on the floor. Though the details are a bit different, the procedure's basically the same, just longer. A lot longer. Because of the low speed of 110 watt teletype, loading all 9.26 kilobytes of data general standalone basic takes over 15 minutes to accomplish, which is almost as slow as loading a Commodore 64 game from a 1541. After a considerable amount of waiting, the teletype finally and immediately prints out this message. Once we get the now full trash bin out of the way, we can sit down and answer yes, because we're not, and we get our basic prompt. I can type in the requisite eternal printing program. This version doesn't really stem from any specific implementation. It's written mostly from the memory of the version that my dad taught me to play when I was very young. Also gives a great demonstration of that cool blink and light display. It's even one of the ones that still uses incandescent light bulbs instead of LEDs. originally playing to have this out and running so people could just, you know, walk by and play a round or two of Hunt the Wumpus on a teletype on a Nova. But, well, things happened. Though, to be fair, if I hadn't been sent home from university, I probably would not have had the time to get this thing working in the first place. So, what now? Well, the next thing I want to do with this thing is get some proper secondary storage. Basic is cool and good, as are serial loads from paper tape, or a USB serial adapter and TerraTerm, if I'm being practical. But I'd really love to get some sort of storage and run, like, RDOS or something. Like a 9-track like a tape transport, or a floppy disk driver or even one of those cartridge disk drives, like a Diablo 31 or 44. I actually have a cartridge disk controller. It supports a few, but finding the actual drives that it supports in the budget that's attainable by a semi-broke college kid is uh, its proving to be quite a challenge. I am working on a Novaline disk emulator, think XT-IDE for mini-computers. If I don't find 
any sort of secondary storage, it'll probably end up in my D116. There's also an SDK being written by a guy in Gnome who goes by Quantex. Uh, there's an assembler ready, and he's working on a C compiler. His, uh, his ultimate goal is to port Unix to the Nova platform. That is a fair ways off, though. Anyway, that's all I got. Any questions? Can, can you even ask questions like this? I'm going to assume yes, because otherwise asking for questions is kind of pointless.